what's up fight fans welcome to another exciting video here at the african fighters today we'll be looking at heavyweight boxing and we'll be focusing on um one of the exciting fighters out of africa the number one ranked heavyweight fighter um from nigeria efi ajaba we'll be talking about efi ajaba and um, his recent fight against joseph dramov joseph dramos the hungarian um before I go into this video, make sure to like the video, make sure to share it out in the comment section, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, okay guys, so let's go straight into this video. We'll be looking at Efe Ajaba's journey into the heavyweight division, his recent fight against Joseph Dramov, the good from the fight, the bad, and also the outright ugly. So guys, let's go straight into this. Efe Ajaba, as we all know, exciting heavyweight fighter, powerful hands, knockout at his, if Ajaba came into limelight in 2017 when he was knocking out guys, working his way into the heavyweight ranks. Uh, along the line, he defeated um, some good fighters. Um, he, defeated, he defeated fighters like Ali Mansour, I would say well-known fighters or known fighters. He defeated Michael Wallish. Um, he also defeated um, Ali Eren Demirezin, a Turkish. He defeated um, Aigo Kiladze. He defeated Razvan Kajunu and then also fought Jonathan Rice, who is also currently in the top 40 of the heavyweight division, and Brian Howard. Although the last two are kind of journeymen in the heavyweight division. The retest came when he fought Frank Sanchez. It was it was a fight seen as the next breakthrough star in the heavyweight division. They were both undefeated. A victory for Frank Sanchez would put him up there. A victory for Efe Ajapa would put him up there in the elite of, uh, of the heavyweight division. Um, but in that fight, um, Frank Sanchez proved that he was the experienced fighter, he was the tactical fighter, he was the better boxer. He outclassed Ajaba um, for whole 10 rounds and won the fight on point to remain undefeated. Frank Sanchez has now moved to the rankings and he's now ranked number 12. Ajaba, the, fight, the defeat means he's no longer undefeated. He was previously 15 wins. Um, um, zero loss, undefeated fighter with um, 12 knockouts, but a defeat to Fran Sanchez took him to 15 wins, one loss. And then, the fight happened October 10, 2022, 2021, almost a year ago. We were hoping to see Ajaba return to the ring earlier, but due to some unknown reason from us outside, from the outside, we don't know what was the issue, Ajaba made his return yesterday. And he fought Joseph Dramos, Dramos, the Hungarian, the unranked heavyweight. He fought Joseph Dramov and he defeated Joseph Dramov yesterday night by TKO in round two. He outclassed the, the boxer and also dropped him twice in round two before Joseph quit. Could not continue and the fight was stopped and Ajaba won the fight via TKO. So, um... That is it. So um, we're going to look at the good out of this fight. Um, this video is going to be kind of a bit of a criticism video, but I'm going to look at the good and, like I said, the bad and the outright ugly. The good in this from this from this um from this fight is that Ajaba has bounced back, and um with a win, with a knockout win or TKO win, he is now sixteen wins, one loss, thirteen wins by KO TKO, so which is impressive. Currently ranked number 27 or 28, according to BoxRec. Ajaba is now back to the winning column. And this fight, as we all know, like I say, impressive win. In two rounds, the fight was scheduled for eight rounds. Two rounds, he defeated Dramos. And another thing about the fight is also, this fight is a tune-up fight, or as they call it, a warm-up fight. After losing to Frank Sanchez, some boxers always like to go to take tune-up fights, bouncing back. We've seen Tyson Fury... Uh, he has done that before. He's fought Otto Wallin. He fought um um I can't remember the other opponent. He fought some tune of fight before fighting Wilder again. So some people will say it's good to fight to turn up fight just to gain confidence, just to gain that momentum to build back and get into the willing column. It just helped overall to build boxer's confidence. So these are the good aspects of the fight. Um, the point is what is next for Jabba with this with this victory. So now I'll go straight to looking at the the bad side from bad side from this fight, the bad aspect of this fight. 
So, which will also ask the question, what is next for Ajaba? Is Ajaba going to take another turn of fight? That's number one. Number two, what is the caliber, caliber of opponent Ajaba is fighting? Ajaba was in the top 20 before fighting Fran Sanchez. The goal was to put him in top 10, top 12. He's, he's supposed to take the rank Frank Sanchez ranking at the moment. He should be number 12 or number 10. But going to fight an unranked Joseph Dramov is a no-no. It's a no-no. Ajaba should be fighting uh, fight boxers or should be boxing guys in the top 40 of the heavy division. Or even top 30, he's 27 or 28. Should not be fighting guys that are unranked. So caliber of opponent matters. Is Ajaba going to fight another unranked boxer next? If so, then that says a lot about his uh, mindset. That says a lot about his career path and trajectory. Because you're in boxing, most times you fight top 10 fights, top 15 fights in your career just to, um, they, call, they kind of call it um, record padding. <laughs> just to get an impressive record before moving early, to getting the experience and all that, building your, your CV. And he has done that up to 15 and 15 wins, zero losses. He has fought some decent, like I mentioned. Um, and now he's he should be fighting elite elite fighters in the top 30, top 40. Top 30, I would say. So, Ajaba, caliber of opponent next will determine what career path he's going to take. So, I'm not going to criticize him completely because we don't know what his plans are. We don't know if he's going to be fighting another guy who is in the top 30 next. We don't know. So, we'll wait to see. So, for that reason, I'm not criticizing too much, but I'm going to assume he's fighting a top guy. Another bad thing from this fight is that. The kind of opponent, like I mentioned, Ajaba is fighting a guy who is on rank. Like I said, Ajaba should be fighting guys like Martin Bakoli, rank number rank 11 rank. Fighting guys like Otto Wally, number 13 rank. Fighting guys like Philip Hegrovich, number 14 rank. Fighting guys like Ali, Ali Erin Demirezin, who is number 16 rank. He should be fighting guys like Robert Helinius, Adam Kwanowski, number 17, number 20. Charles Martin, rank 22. Ajit Kabaye, rank 25, Trevor Brown, Trev Trevor Bryan, the guy, the former, uh, former um, WBA heavyweight champion. Um, he should be fighting the guy. That's the guy, Daniel Dubois, uh, the throne, to, to take the WBA heavyweight champion. Joshua was the WBA super heavyweight champion. So he, Trevor Brown is rank number 30. These are the fight Ajaba can go for. Gerard Washington, number 34 rank. Higgy Fury, number 23 rank. Daniel Dubois, 18 rank. Tony Yoka, number 15 rank, Michael Hunter, number 9, and even the 50 year old man, Lewis Ortiz, who is rank number 10. Ajaba should be fighting this caliber of opponent now to push him into that part of going into the top of the heavyweight division. So, so the thing I'm, the thing I'm, I'm also worried about is that is, what is Ajaba's career trajectory? Is he looking at just making money in boxing or is he looking at making history, becoming one of the elite and also winning titles, becoming a champion in the heavyweight division. That is what all of us thought we thought when he when he started boxing, when he was coming undefeated, winning guys we were looking at him moving to that heavyweight top ten ranking, getting title fight, fighting the big guys and also becoming a champion. Representing Africa, Nigeria and all that. But at the moment it seems kind of a, a backward um, movement for Ajaba. Like I said, Ajaba last fought in 2019 against Ali Mansour. That was the last time he fought an 8-rounder fight. After then, he was, all his fight was 10 rounds. In my opinion, I believe he should be going for 12-round fights at the moment because these are, these are title fights rounds. Competitive fights, title fights are all 12 rounds in the heavy division. He should be going for a 12-round fight. Sometimes they are 10 rounds as well, but most of the fights, elite fights are 12 rounds. He should be going for 12-round fight. After fighting about five different fights or six different fights, ten rounds, he he now fought Dramos for eight rounds. Although the fight ended in round two, he won via TKO. But I see it as a backward movement. He should be going forward. So Ajaba, what is his plan? Is he just going to fight to make money, or is he going to also fight to become champion? The next thing I'm also asking, I'm curious to know. Ajaba is currently in his prime. He's twenty eight years old. I don't see the reason why he's not fighting the elite. Like I mentioned, the names I mentioned, he should be fighting those guys at the moment. He has active years of boxing in the next four or five years. Once he's 32, 33, it is over for him. It is over for him. I'm not saying completely over. He will be fighting, but not competitively for, for a title. 
this is time for him to put himself in the next four years into title contention and fight for the belt. So that is my point. So now to the downright ugly, to tell you how Ajaba current fight doesn't look good of, doesn't look good for him. Like I mentioned earlier, he fought Ali Erin Demirezin. The Turkish guy it was a very tough fight. Ajaba won that via decision, unanimous decision in um 2019. Ali that was um Ali Erin first defeat and his only defeat. After that fight, he has gone on to fight six other times. Six other times. He was eleven he was eleven and zero before Ajaba. He lost the fight. That was his first defeat. He now went on to fight six other times. He's currently on a six fight winning streak. And the names he has compiled are names like Kevin Johnson, Gerard Washington, who is currently ranked number 34. He has he recently defeated Adam Kaunaski. Another guy seen to be one of the the shining star of the heavy division. And now Ali Aaron has gone top has gone up in the rankings and he's currently ranked number 16. This is the guy that Ajaba defeated. And his only defeat is to Ajaba. He's now ranked number 16 and Ajaba is now ranked number 28. He's 12th spot above Ajaba. So this shows the fall of Ajaba um, from his recent move. So um, I think for Ajaba to be competitive, for him to be in the title contention, he should be fighting the top guys like I mentioned, Martin Bukoli, uh, Philip Hergrovich. Robert Helinos, Andal Kaunaski, Gerard, even Gerard Washington, the, the guy ranked 34. He, he, should not, he should not be fighting an unranked fighter after fighting Frank Sanchez. Frank Sanchez is currently ranked number 12. So that's what I think. If Ajaba really has a, has a mindset of becoming a champion, he needs to get in there competitively. And he needs to fight twice or three times a year. He, he last fought in um, October 2021 and now fighting um, August. That is... 10 months after for a guy who wants to be a champion you shouldn't be fighting once a year at 28 at Anthony joshua was already a heavyweight champion holding multiple belts at joshua is 32 now ajaba is 28 and he needs to start to act now the time is now or never but i'm not going to be too critical about ajaba because i don't know his plan so we're going to wait to see and this could just be a tune-up fight to give him confidence he may be going next to fight the top Top 10 guys, top 20 guys, even top 30 guys is not a bad move, but nothing out of top 30. So, um, this video will not be too critical. We'll wait to see next what happened to Ajaba's um, fight, his next fight. Is he fighting again this year? Which I think he should. And he should be fighting a very good rank fighter. And then putting himself into that elite position and contesting for the belts in the next two years. Uh, so guys, that is it. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Do you think Ajaba fighting Dramos was a good move? And do you think he's going to bounce back into the rankings and um, challenge for the title? Or do you think Ajaba is done and um, this is a downward movement and a, and a big fall for Ajaba? Let me know in the comment section. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe. See you some other, see you some other time. Peace out. Bye for now. Ah,